Hey guys, I'm in Brooklyn, New York. I'm hanging out at Propel Bikes with my friend Chris. How's it going, man? Hey guys. You know, I appreciate you letting me shoot in the shop because it is freezing out this morning. We're still gonna get out, we're still gonna do a ride test, but it's just a little quieter. You know, there's some horns and crazy people yeah, out on the street. <laughs> you know, it's fun, but I wanna make sure everyone can kind of hear because we're looking at the Specialized Turbo Levo Hardtail Comp, meaning kind of like entry level, uh, six fatty meaning it's got the, the plus size tires, and we can jump right in on those. So these are 27.5 by three inches, um, really becoming popular in the electric bike space. I think because it, it adds some comfort, it gives you a better uh, surface contact, like a larger surface patch. Um, and they also decrease deflection. So when you're on a mountain bike like this, if you're hitting rocks and stuff, you know, this is a little bit heavier and I think it gives you that extra grip and so you're not necessarily gonna slide, but it does add a little bit of weight and so the steering might slow down a little bit. The, the actual diameter, it, I think it's a little bit taller than a normal 650B tire because you know they're fatter. So it's, it might ride a little bit more like a 29er in some cases. Um, this is about 49 pounds. We were weighing it earlier. This does come in four different sizes, so they might vary slightly. But the coolest thing about this bike and the Turbo Levo line in general, in my opinion, is just how integrated it is, like how nice it looks. You can you know, hardly tell it's an electric bike, and it's, it's a really quiet motor too. So the battery pack uh, is right, right here in this sort of fat, flat <laughs> down tube. I love that they're able to squeeze in a bottle cage mounting point right here, and that they've got this little extra tool you know, this is specialized. They've, they've got all kinds of different, depending on the trim level, you know, they even have like missing links and stuff. Because this is the entry level and it's a hardtail, it's $4,000, it's quite a bit less than some of their FSR full suspension models. I actually bought the FSR Expert earlier this year uh, because I wanted to test the Bros motor. It was like the first, one of the first bikes that had it. I like specialized, spent a ton of money on this thing and some of the differences I noticed between these two bikes, or even just the Comp FSR, is that this only has um, 10 sprockets in the rear versus 11. You still get a, a really good range here. It's like 11 to 40 teeth, SRAM GX. Um, you know, chain ring up here is, is kind of a, a more traditional size compared to something like the Bosch uh, mid-drive system where they have a smaller sprocket. So again, everything kind of blends in. It's more standard parts, but you still got a nice little, almost like a, a chain, like a, I don't know, it's gonna keep this cleared a little bit. As you're riding, it might also uh, prevent the, the chain from dropping when you're off-road and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so up here, got a nice air fork, fairly adjustable, no remote um, activation, but we do have a seat post dropper with remote activation over here. So as you're on the trail and you're riding hard and pedaling, but then maybe you're, you're dropping down, you can drop that post. I do that quite a bit, actually. It's one of my favorite features on my bike. And 200 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes. It's another really important thing when you're dealing with a little bit of extra weight and actually riding off-road. 12 millimeter through axle in the rear. Um, 15 up front with the quick release up front. So that's another kind of neat thing about mid drives. It's easier to service the wheels and stuff and the weight is low. It's centered just really well integrated. Again, I keep saying that and I love the, the paint on this thing. I mean, it just looks mean. It's stealth. It's, you know, clean. All the wires kind of blend in and they also, they're internally routed. So even if they weren't black and the frame wasn't black, you wouldn't notice because they just go right through got some bumpers here so that you can prevent some oversteer and scratching the frame. And you can see this LED console on the left side of the bike. That's really all you have to interact with. And a couple times I've you know, been thinking like as I'm on the trail, man, I need a piece of duct tape <laughs> They kind of cover that up. There is no display panel or anything up front here. The cockpit's super clean. It looks just like a regular mountain bike. Got some trigger shifters over here on the right. We got our SRAM hydraulic, you know, two finger levers here. There's just, there's no big display that might get broken if you crash that you have to deal with that people are gonna ask about, but there are those LEDs and they look extra bright because we're inside, but yeah, I don't know, like some tape or something. Each one of those 10 dots signifies 10% uh, of, of battery capacity. And you've got a plus and a minus, and you can, you can kind of go up three levels or, or down 
to that, that first level. So the higher you go, the more power, the more assistance you're going to get. And you're going to be able to hit that top speed of 20 miles per hour assisted. This is a class one electric bike. It's, it's the most allowable in terms of riding off road on trails and stuff. California has been you know, leading the charge in policy, like electric bike policy and adopting some of Europe's standards. And so this is, this is the kind of bike that, you know, again, it's quiet. It doesn't go unless you pedal. And in fact, it uses torque sensing and cadence sensing. So it's not going to get out of control. It's going to stop fairly instantly when you stop pedaling. And that's exactly what you want in an electric bike. One thing I was disappointed about was that being a hard tell, I didn't see any, you know, mounting points here for like a rear rack. And I'm, I'm sort of of the mind that if you're going to spend 4,000 bucks, you know, it's nice to, you know, maybe that's the only bike you're going to get that you could afford, at least in my case, it's a lot of money. So it'd be nice if you could use this more as a commuter too. Like maybe you just had a rack and you're just going to mount that there during the week and use it to get to work and have fun and jump off the curbs or cut the trails a little bit. And then on a weekend you could take that rack off, you know, and ride it on, on more, more of the trails, single track and stuff. Well, unfortunately, you know, you can't do that because they don't have the mounting points. I think you could kind of rig something up, you know, and people might say, oh, the beam rack, but because this is a dropper seat post and maybe you have to swap that out. And I think it's 30.9 millimeters. If you want to do that, it's not the end of the world. This is not the only mountain style electric bike that kind of suffers from that, um, you know, limitation, but it's just something I think about when I'm making a decision. Uh, the other, one of the other gripes I have is that the battery pack, it just uses this, this kind of through axle and it, it flops out like this. So you can, you can charge this on or off the bike, but you don't actually need a key to get it off. Someone could just come with a tool and take that thing off. And I think it's like 800 bucks for a replacement battery pack on this thing. Um, it's, you know, fairly good size, awesome cells. I believe they're Samsung, 36 volts, 12.5 amp hours. It's almost half a kilowatt hour. Charging port is down here by the left crank and it, it uses the magnetic energy bus standard and it stays mostly out of the way. You can see this is kind of a plastic bash guard on the bottom. It's not super duper tough, but it also doesn't hang down super low. Some of the other e-bikes out there have like a metal plate, like a shield, like armor, whereas this is meant to be just like smooth and, and more hidden, I think, than super tough. But you know, Specialized has great warranty. They're a company that I trust and I'm willing to trade off some of the design aesthetic stuff here. Um, but one other area is, you know, they don't have like a, any kind of like nick guard kind of thing. They've got a little bit of that plate action here, but it'd be nice if there was another piece of foam or plastic or just something. So, you know, just to kind of keep it, it from getting beat up. It looks beautiful right now. We haven't ridden it. It hasn't been off on the trails or anything. Um, you know, and again, over here, we've got this little bit of a rubber piece, which is really nice on, on the, the right chain stay. So that's what I'm talking about. Just something extra so that, you know, as the chain hits, uh, you know, or in that case, as the little rocks and stuff bounce up, it just keeps the frame intact. I believe it uses their M5 aluminum, like high level stuff. It's meant to be sturdy, lightweight, high performance. You know, that's specialized. They, they do a good job. Chris, uh, you know, what, what have I missed here? Like, what, what are your thoughts on this bike? Oh, I really like it. I mean, the integration is beautiful on this. Um, a couple of things that you did mention, you know, about the display. Uh, there are a couple of different options for kind of add-on. One of the things is a, a Garmin remote, which you can actually mount to the handlebars so you can change the assist levels. Cool. Not having to reach down while you're riding. Which and you is get nice the Garmin option. stuff, like the heart rate and all that. Exactly. So there's different ways you can use just the remote on its own, or you could connect it to certain Garmin devices and kind of work all in one. And the other option is actually an app. So you, you can, uh, if you wanted to, mount. So like this is, this is the app, and it's connected to the bike. And when it's connected, you could tune all sorts of different things about uh, how the motor assists in the different levels. There's three mm. different levels. Uh, there's the max motor current, acceleration, you know, all these things right now, they're kind of pumped up to the top. So <laughs> in the top level of assistance, you're really, um, if you do end up changing the tire size, you can change it in here as well, which is a nice feature. Mm. And then on top of that, you can connect to like Strava and different things like that. And you can have, um, all sorts of fitness stats and, and that sort of stuff. So it's it's nice. It's it's nice that it kind of these things I see that they're going to constantly develop as well. Specialized is going to continue to develop their proprietary app 
mm-hmm. which is called Mission Control. That's and, right. And um, yeah, so we're, we're pretty excited about it. On the Strava note, you know, I think some people out there are like, hey, you know, my King of the Hill record or what. It's like, I think they automatically uh, categorize it as electric uh, in, in their app we're, integration here. Right, right. And yeah, so the, there is a new designation in Strava to select specifically e-bike and I think yeah. that, you know, people feel a little bit better about that. So. Yeah, and then, again, that's because it's like specialized. They're a leader in the United States to do a great job with that. Uh, ha- having one of these myself, I don't use the app like ever. <laughs> you know, I just, a part of the reason I love the bike is because it's just like beep on go, like super easy. You don't get your speed, you don't get your odometer and some of those other things, even the battery, like I kind of have to like look over and like how full am I? But it does go a long, long way. The mid-drive motors are known for being super efficient because as you shift gears, you're empowering the motor to spin at that high efficient RPM. This is a 250 watt bros motor. Uh, peak watt output I've I read is like 530 and it offers 90 Newton meters from what I've read. So, you know, definitely one of the higher power, more powerful motors out there. When you're at a high RPM, you definitely hear it a little more where it's like, but you know, given something like this with the knobby tires and stuff, this is actually, it, it disappears. Um, and I've, I've ridden this out on trails and stuff um, all over the country, you know, just taking mine along on my car and, uh, you know, people rarely notice. Occasionally someone's like, what bike is that, you know? But it's not like, hey, get your electric bike out of here. It's, it's not like that. People are pretty cool about it, especially um, some of the higher end ones. They have the specialized graphics. And I think it comes with stickers, like right. a sticker pack. Right, it does. Yeah, but this is like the stealth bomber look. So I think that's uh, a great introduction. I think we should just go out there and, and do some test riding. Yeah, what do you sounds think? Sounds great. Yeah, Sweet. Absolutely. Okay guys, we're out on the street now. Uh, I wanted to call out the RockShox Reba. I believe it's 120 millimeters of travel. Over here, we've got the, the on-off. Just do that real quick. We hold the power button for a second. The lights come on, and we're literally ready to ride. You know, we're, we're in full power, but if you minus, it goes to, you know, level two, minus again, level one. It's really that simple. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get on this thing and uh, give it a ride. Also, this is a size medium frame, um, in case you were curious. Yeah, let's do it. You see, it's a pretty responsive setup right there. Some shifting shots. Just hit 20 miles per hour I could feel I could feel the motor just kind of like ease out so that's one of the things it gets you going pretty quickly um, but that's because we're on the street you know when you're climbing and this thing does climb well it uh, it's not such it, it's not so quick you know you're I find myself hovering around that like 10 mile per hour mark um, we are climbing right now a little bit and I can even feel a little bit of surge like as I push it's, it's actually responding to how hard I'm pushing, you know, and I start pushing a little bit harder, we get up to speed. Now I'm gonna switch to a, a lower gear. Oh boy, a little 
little bit of wind. This one doesn't have shift sensing, so might have noticed a little bit of mashing there. Very fast, maybe not quite as fast as Bosch, but it's quieter. You get that standard size chain ring, so they don't have to have, um, you know, the, the extra guides and tensioners and stuff. Kind of, uh, you know, there's always different trade-offs here. Let's get another look at this thing out in the daylight. Yeah, looking pretty good. You know, and these, these brake levers, I think they might have adjustable reach. There's like a screw in there. Do you know if that's the case? Right. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, if you have smaller hands, you don't have to reach quite as far. You can dial these in. That's something I kind of appreciate. Okay, so we were talking about racks and stuff earlier and the whole commuting concept, even though it's a mountain bike, kind of. What when You were saying something about racks? Yeah, so basically, uh, one of the racks that we commonly use for this type of bike, or even a full suspension bike that doesn't have the bosses to mount a rack, is yeah. the Thule Pack and Pedal, it's called. Oh, and yeah. Basically, you can mount that right on the, on the seat stays. And it works really well and you don't need to uh screw it into anything it just basically clamps on there does it do you, do you have any of those laying around in the shop uh do you sell I your last do. one yeah, yeah. I, I think i have one there that uh, might be able to get a look at that or i can do an overlay of an image you know th those are like a 100 bucks right yeah just about yeah. okay so it's possible but you know this is i guess it's it's meant to be a mountain bike and stuff that's just one thing i like to call out and i love that you got a solution for us yeah. man thank you right. <laughs> okay you can see on this Bosch bike, there's that smaller ring I was talking about, 16 tooth, and then the chain tensioner bringing it up. You can just see the comparison right here side by side. The battery just disappears um, versus being kind of external. This is easier and faster to get off though, and it does have that locking core. So some of the, some of the trade-offs. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. A little bit of banging because he's climbing and shifting to go on the other side. Just two guys riding electric mountain bikes in New York, huh? <laughs> Beautiful. One of the things I like about the, the Levo that I've gotten is, you know, I'm running it tubeless, so it's even lighter and I can drop that PSI really low and use it successfully in softer terrain, like muddier, kind of sandier type of environments. I was talking about those through axles before, and that, in, in my experience, makes it a little bit easier to line up the wheels, you know, get them on and off, and just adds that, that strength and uh, that stiffness that gives you the handling for, for off-road riding. <coughs> well, you know, we had a lot of fun out there. Um, I hope this answers some of your questions. I know I didn't go like completely into all the details about the fork and some of the, the chain, chain ring sizes and the different sizes. All that's back at electricbikereview.com. Um, check it out. Feel free to chime in. This has been out for about a year now at the time of, of this review. And uh, you know, I welcome feedback. This is definitely like the bargain price one. They, they also have the full suspensions. They even have some women specific models and a fat tire model. So Specialized has really jumped in uh, into the e-bike game. It's neat to see. I think things are going pretty well for them and um, I hope to see more cool stuff in the future. Chris, thanks again so much. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, ride safe, have fun.